Donna here and welcome to my channel Everyday Homemade. Everyday Homemade is designed to teach you the basics of cooking all the while giving you something delicious and homemade to make for your family. Today I'm going to be making a chunky sausage soup and this has Italian sausage and cannellini beans, a little carrot and celery and then a secret ingredient so you don't want to miss it. So let's get started. Anytime you're going to prepare a soup or whatever it is you're preparing, you want to do your mise en place first. And that means to get everything in place. So I'm going to dice up the celery. I'm going to peel and dice the carrots. And I'm also going to dice up an onion. And then we have a little bit of garlic. So I'm going to go ahead and get the mise en place done. And then we're going to start cooking our soup. My pan has come up to heat. It's nice and warm. So I'm going to go ahead and add some oil. And we're going to saute these vegetables. So I'm going to start with the onion. Here's the sizzle. Pan's nice and warm. I'm going to put in the carrots and the celery. And a little bit of garlic. So you can see that the onions are starting to become translucent and that's what you want. This is a basic mirepoix, which is a French culinary term, which is onion, carrots, and celery that is the base of your sauces and soups. Now that the onion has softened, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some sauces. This is just an Italian mild sausage. You could also get a spicy if that's what you like. I'm going to go ahead and break it up. I have this handy little tool that breaks the sausage up. I love sausage in soups. It gives it such a nice flavor. has cooked all the way through, it's no longer pink, I'm going to add the broth. I always use chicken broth instead of water. I always want to add just a little bit more flavor to my soup or whatever it is that I'm making. This is four cups of chicken broth. I'm going to go ahead and stir it in. I'm going to let it warm up and I want to scrape up all the little bits on the bottom of the pot. It's called fond and it's when we Cook the sausage in there, part of it stuck to the bottom. And this always helps build flavor if you kind of scrape all that up. The soup is just about up to a simmer and that's what I want. I'm going to add white beans. Now these are cannellini beans and I rinse them. So I'm going to put those in. And then earlier we cut up the potatoes. I have them sitting in water because I didn't want them to turn brown. So I'm going to go ahead and drain those. And then we'll add those to the pot also. We're also going to be adding some fresh herbs. This is rosemary, so I'm going to add rosemary into the pot. Now rosemary is a hearty herb, so it will withstand a longer cooking time. I'm also going to be adding some basil to the pot. But basil is something that you really want to add at the end because it kind of wilts down and you won't get as much flavor from it and it won't be pretty. But what you can do is add the stalks, the basil stalks, to the soup. 
So I'm going to add those in now, and then I'll pull them out at the end. I chopped up some fresh rosemary. I'm going to put that in. I'm going to bring this up to the simmer, up to a simmer, and then I'm going to cook it until the potatoes are soft. So my soup has been simmering, and I did mention a secret ingredient. So what is that? It's really just going to give a little pop and wow to the soup. So what it is, is one teaspoon of white vinegar and then two teaspoons of honey. This is gonna elevate the soup and really just give it that extra deliciousness. So now that everything is in my pot, I do wanna give it a little bit of a taste. I did season it with salt and pepper while I was sauteing the vegetables. But you know, it's probably not enough salt in there. And what you're looking for is when you taste the broth, you know, can you taste all the ingredients in the pot? Does the sausage come right through? So that's what salt does, is it brings a pop of flavor. It's nice, but it still tastes just a little bit bland to me. So I'm gonna add a couple pinches of salt and, you know, a little bit of pepper. We'll give it a stir real quick and then I'll taste it again and see if I get that pop that I'm looking for. Very nice. Now I'm getting the sausage and it's coming through great. So I'm going to let it simmer for a few more minutes and then we're going to add our fresh basil at the very end. The carrots and the potatoes are now soft. I'm going to go ahead and remove the stems that we put in earlier. There's a couple of them in here. I think there's three. Yep, there's three. I had to find it, fish around for it for a minute. So you see they're all kind of, the color is completely out of them. I don't know if you can see. But we're going to add the fresh basil now. Now the fresh basil is going to give it a nice pop, but like I said, you always want to add it at the end of a dish. Basil does not stand up to a long cooking time. I'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of a taste. It's super warm, so and it's still simmering in the pot. I do want to try it, just see if I can get all those flavors. And then that secret ingredient we added, which was the vinegar and the honey, just gives it another depth of flavor. Mm. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. Sausage comes through nice and you get the little sweetness and the little edge from the vinegar. And then the carrots, of course, are always so sweet. Mm. You're gonna love the soup. It's one of my favorites. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to show you how to properly cool down this soup because that is really important to know. It's important when you're going to store a soup or a sauce to always cool it down to about 70 degrees. This is for food safety. So I'm going to add my soup into this bowl. I'm going to be storing it after I have lunch today. And then I'm going to put it into an ice bag. And you will be surprised how long it takes for a liquid to cool down to 70 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to give it a test and I'm going to show you just how long it takes. So there's all my soup. And I have a bowl here with ice cubes and water. And I'm just going to set it right into there. And I'm going to let it sit. Now you do have to stir it occasionally because the heat will get trapped inside so if you stir it it will bring out the steam and I'll show you that in a minute. The soup has been sitting in the ice bath for approximately six minutes. Now you can see there's no steam coming off the top but as soon as I start to stir it look at all that steam coming up. So all that heat was trapped in the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and let this continue to sit. But just for fun let's check to see what the temperature is in the soup. Now it was practically boiling. It was up at a full simmer. Boiling is 212 degrees and we're currently 
around 138, 139. So we're still at 104 degrees and now it's been seven minutes. So we're gonna let it cool down. We want to get all the way to 70 to be a safe temperature to put away. exactly one hour since I put this soup into this ice bath to cool down. Now the rule is you want your dish, whatever it is, to cool down from like boiling to 70 degrees within two hours for food safety concerns. So it would be safe to consume later on. So it's been in the ice bath for an hour. Let's see where we're at. So it's at 69 degrees, which is perfect. You can also kind of see the fat congealing around the sides of the dish, so I know it had to be really close. So now I can put it into the refrigerator and it'll cool down the rest of the way within a proper amount of time. Today we learned a few things during the cook. We learned how to check for seasoning to make sure you're getting the most flavor out of your dish. We also learned to use the stems from the fresh basil and then put the leaves in at the last minute just to get the best flavor out of it. We also learned how to properly cool down a soup or a sauce. Anytime you're going to be putting it into the refrigerator for storage later, you want to bring it down to a temperature of 70 degrees. And you saw how long it actually took to do that. So if you enjoyed this video, I want you to go ahead and like and subscribe to never miss an episode. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day and keep it homemade every day. Bye everyone.